In this video, we're discussing why specialty coffee as we know it is dead. Welcome, my name is Patrick Rolf and this is Coffee with April. For the last months, weeks, kind of a long time now, I've been getting different questions regarding processing of coffee, right? So processing or different styles of new innovative processing is widely discussed both in the world of competitions, but also just in general among kind of guests and, and consumers, right? So in this video, we kind of want to clarify, let's say April's standpoint on a lot of these questions, right? I myself have been in a few articles lately that's going to be published soon as well, kind of explaining a little bit more in detail these different perspectives, right? And for those of you that have been following us on Patreon, you've already heard me rant quite a lot about it, right? And I think Specialty Coffee today is in a pretty interesting position, right? And that is because we're in the process of redefining what it is. Back when I started in the industry or in coffee 10 years ago, it was crystal clear what Specialty Coffee was for everyone, especially from a taste perspective. And back in th those days, it was all about reintroducing or introducing what coffee should taste like, right? Uh, especially then for a guest or a consumer that is maybe not used to it. Today, what is happening more and more is that we realize somewhere halfway through that in specialty coffee, it's hard for us to reach as many consumers as possible. So rather than being better at communicating what specialty coffee should stand for and could taste like, we ended up in a situation where we tried to modify our own coffee to fit a wider range of consumers, right? Basically, we made specialty coffee a lot less special. And that kind of brings us to today, right? Where we're in a situation where specialty coffee has never tasted in general as bad as it does today, right? And I'm going to clarify a little bit later on what I mean with that, right? Because there's obviously different perspectives to it. But basically, my main reflection during the time in coffee up until now is that instead of trying to take all of those values that we have in the specialty coffee and spread them, we basically changed the value, right? Which is a very common practice where whenever you reach an obstacle that is difficult, rather than kind of move through it or move past it, you kind of change your path. And that's a little bit what Specialty Coffee has been doing the last years as well, right? I think the most recent trend in that is infused coffees. The most recent trend in that is processing methods that are so intense in generating new flavors that we kind of lose the varietal and the terroir, right? So this video is a little bit about specifying where is April in, in all of this, right? And let's put on the record out there that we're actively not supporting any kind of infused coffees in any shape or forms. Now, defining what an infused coffee is can be a little bit tricky. Uh, most of the time it's linked to some kind of natural gas in an anaerobic tank. That's a different kind of side story, and I'm sure we're going to get into those videos as we do more farm visits and more farm material as we go on as well, right? But basically the core thing of what we do here at April is that we want to represent three very important things in the cups of coffee, in the roasted coffee that we share with the world, right? And that's one, terroir, two, varietal, and three, processing. But all three linked together in a way that we can define every separate element or variable in that cup of coffee, right? So when we come across cups of coffee that is process dominant, to an extent that we can't taste a different varietal or taste that different farm or the kind of different attributes that comes into the coffee because of the work they put in, that coffee for us is not defined as an interesting coffee, right? Then you call that specialty or not, that's a different story kind of. But the whole point is that we spend all of our time visiting these different producers, choosing the producers we work with, supporting them in their work, and we, when we spend as much time as we do traveling to these different places and different people, our job is really just to represent what they bring to the table, right? So we don't want a Costa Rican coffee that tastes generic, that could taste like something from Colombia, from Panama, you know, from Ethiopia, from Kenya. Right? We're looking for something where all those three attributes are combined and showcases that unique taste experience that can only come from that farm. And I think we all know at this point that especially coffee as a, some kind of grade or quality is becoming a lot more generic. 
So it's harder to define where that comes from. We have less transparency in different processing methods. Not all is being communicated. These days, if you drink a washed coffee, a lot of the times it's actually gone through an anaerobic process before. It's just that some down, sometime on, kind of down the line, you forgot mentioning that, right? So we're at a point where it's even more important to be more transparent, clearer in what we do and why we do it, and also kind of take a standpoint because I'm still one of those that believes, especially coffee, in terms of defining quality for what quality could be. Especially coffee is not supposed to be for everyone. We talk often about how it's better if everyone could drink specialty coffee in the world. Well, that's true if we stay true to what specialty coffee is. But if we change specialty coffee into something else, and in that way make more people drink it, then it's not really specialty coffee anymore, right? So we just kind of want to clarify our standpoint on it. I think it's important. It's a conversation worth having. And part of this debate has been a few very kind of outspoken people that have said that it's good for the producer, whatever the producer can do to sell more coffee. And that's, that's true and not true at the same time, right? Uh, because we want to get to a point where we can define what quality is and when there is a consensus of that is, right? So in, on one side, specialty coffee, as we know it, at least when I first stumbled upon it when I started in the industry, is very much dead, right? Which is, is both good and bad at the same time because we need to progress, we need to evolve into something new, into something different. That makes a lot of sense. But we also need consensus in the industry in terms of what quality is and what quality should be, right? Um, and for us, that is all about those kind of three variables in a cup where we can taste the varietal, the terroir, and that unique processing that comes from that producer, right? Staying away from any generic, staying away from any kind of infused coffees. Infused coffees really don't have a place in this industry to begin with. Um, it's interesting because when I started in coffee, then we had a lot of these kind of larger roasteries that would mix like flavors into their, their ground coffee and sell in bags. Very popular in Sweden. And it's interesting because we were kind of fighting against that, especially Coffee World said, no, no, you don't need added flavors in order to make coffee taste amazing. And today what we do is that we add a bunch of stuff to our fermentations and we're communicating that to our consumers as in this is what specialty coffee or coffee can taste like. But that's not true. It's what coffee tastes like when something else is added, right? Um, there is a limitation to the expression of coffees. And I think right now we're spending so much time focusing on how can we add stuff that isn't naturally there to create a new taste experience. So we forget the fact that there's still so much work we can do on a farm level, on a varietal level, on a processing level that is not related to adding stuff that shouldn't be there in the first place, right? So we're basically missing out on an opportunity to really elevate specialty coffee to the next level instead of running with coffee plus various ingredients is defining the new specialty coffee, right? So it's an interesting conversation. It's one we're gonna have a lot more. It's one we're gonna integrate our producer with as well. So you're gonna hear their perspective as well. There is a lot of perspectives on this, which we all respect. That being said, our standpoint is hopefully very clear and it's something that we're gonna to continue to push uh, moving forward. And uh, we intend to share a lot more material when it comes to kind of explaining again that cup quality we're looking for and those three kind of different variables that we think are so important and why they are so important, right? So follow this channel, subscribe, do whatever you need to do to get more of this content as we come. And as always, we're really interested in having a conversation about this. Uh, let's keep it nice. Let's keep it happy. There's just no need not to. Um, and let's see what we can do to kind of push specialty coffee forward without compromising on that future quality of specialty coffee. With that, we uh, want to thank you for watching and remind you that we already have a detailed conversation about this going on on Patreon. So if you want to have a little bit more of an unfiltered version, then make sure you sign up for that as well. Thank you. We want to give a special thank you to all of our Patreon supporters. It's because of you that we are able to continue to make these videos. And we want you all to feel free to always come with suggestions and ideas on the content that you want to see uh, because we are doing this for you and because of you. Thank you from all of us here at April.